Oh my God, so much talking, my voice is so dry. Wow, I am so good with these lighting jokes. Or is that a dad joke? I got bronchitis, <laughs> I got bronchitis. Um, yeah. the Ain't Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus is afar. <laughs> I got bronchitis. <laughs> simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously. I'm just not gonna use that word. Why can't I speak? Your foyer is the first impression your guests get when they come to your home. It can either be welcoming or a chaotic mess, which will scare them off. And I'm not here to judge. If you want them to leave, then by all means, this video may not be for you, but let's go through it anyways. Also, if you say foyer instead of foyer, we need to have a chat because it's French people. Foyer, there's a little accent to go there. Let's avoid some of these common design blunders that turn your entry space into a masterpiece that sets the stage for the rest of your home, like I said before. Welcome back to my channel. If you have not seen or met me before, my name is Phoenix Gray, AKA Design Daddy, or maybe I should say like Granddaddy now. Do you see all these grays? Oh my God, it's a mess. But here we are, we're back. G Phoenix Gray, Grays. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. We're to get a cane next, you never know. <laughs> Make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Mr. Phoenix Gray, where you could see all my daily design advice. You can also join my free design newsletter in the description box below, where I answer all the most commonly asked interior design questions. And subscribe to my OnlyFans. Actually, no, we don't have that. Don't, I don't have that. I swear I don't have it. <laughs> the first mistake that I often see is people turning their foyers into a dumping ground for their shoes, bags, and even their mail. A cluttered entrance can instantly kill the wow factor and it overwhelms the space. It really masks the potential beauty of the area itself. Organization here is the first key above anything else and this is where we need to start to get you into the rest of the design. Consider integrating stylish storage solutions that can not only hide the clutter but add to the overall aesthetic that you want to achieve. Wall-mounted hooks, for your coats and bags, a chic console table with neatly arranged baskets, hideaway trays, or even a sleek shoe cabinet can work wonders in the overall design. By keeping these things organized, you create an inviting ambience while maintaining a functional design statement. For the second one, now that we're getting into the design, let's talk about your foyer flooring. And this is an absolute game changer. Trust me on this one. One of the biggest mistakes is often overlooked and settling for a really mundane flooring choice that doesn't make a really nice impression, or or choosing the same flooring throughout the house continued into the entrance. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is such a missed opportunity. Opting for a flooring material that can really scream wow is such a beautiful and unexpected thing to have in a foyer. A pattern tile, a luxurious marble, or even a geometric hardwood design can really instantly captivate anyone stepping in through the door. Most people that enter your home are looking down when it comes to actually taking off their shoes, and this is the first thing they see. So this is where you're going to make an impact. Your flooring is a canvas, and a bold choice here can really set the stage for your entire house, making a lasting impression that your guests won't soon forget. Listen, I know those super fun mosaic tiles and patterns can be expensive, but the best part is, is that this is such a small square footage in the overall grand scheme of your home that it's not going to cost as much as you think, and it is always worth it to set aside budget for this. This is one of the first things that I notice when I enter a home, and in all my projects I work on, I always encourage having a budget to make an impact here, a really beautiful foyer floor. Lighting isn't just about functionality, it's also about creating the right mood. Unfortunately, many foyers really suffer from inadequate lighting or overly harsh lighting, leaving your guests with a really underwhelming first impression, and really makes the space look either too bright or way too dark. The last thing you want is to have to turn on your phone flashlight just to find your shoes or your keys in your own house. Embrace a layered lighting approach. You're going to be sick of me because I've probably said this five times already. I'm never going to stop saying it because it is so crucial in designing a space to be welcoming and beautiful. Layered lighting can be applied to all your rooms, but specifically in your foyer, you're gonna do something a little bit different. With ambient lighting, it's like a tasteful pendant light or even a statement chandelier that sets the overall tone. Task lighting, such as a stylus table lamp or even a console table, really adds that level of functionality. And don't forget accent lighting. Think about wall sconces or even recessed lights to highlight architectural features or even artwork. By combining these three elements, you really cast your foyer in the best light possible. Wow. I am so good with these lighting jokes. Or is that a dad joke? I guess it's kind of both. 
Anyways, I'd like to think I'm pretty good at it. If you have the option to change the electrical, I will always recommend bringing in wall sconces around a mirror to really give you and your guests the most flattering view of yourself before heading out the door. Lighting is also a really great opportunity to have something that is more playful and artistic in terms of fixtures. Another interesting feature to have is a unique pendant or even a chandelier that draws your eyes upwards. This helps visually extend the look of your room, making it appear taller and larger. I get it, we don't have all that much room, but even if it's a small table lamp that you can fit here, it's going to make the world of a difference. And bonus points, if you get a remote plug, you can set it on a timer and any time it's on or off, it's a needed when it's there because I get it. If you have a plug-in light, not everyone actually uses it because that switch is buried. It is buried behind everything else and no one wants to go looking for it. For fourth on your list, mirrors are a secret weapon in your foyer design that often go unutilized. And let me preface, neglecting mirrors really means missing out on a fantastic opportunity to really amplify your space and your light. And I'm not talking about those boring square and rectangular mirrors. This is your time to really shine. Something that's fun and unique to space to really shake it up. Don't be afraid of shapes here. There are so many unique mirrors out there that really have a sculptural and artistic flair to them to let your personality shine throughout your space. This is the perfect opportunity because there are so many options out there that are actually quite affordable. A well-placed mirror can really illustrate the illusion of a larger space and bounce light around, instantly brightening up the area that is good for any room. Fun mirrors can really infuse that touch of glamour and practicality into your space. And if we're really being honest here, we're playing into that deep, dark sense of vanity that we all have. So go ahead and take a second look at yourself before you go, we're all doing that, right? Or maybe that's just me. Please don't tell me I'm alone here. You, like, you gotta look at yourself before you go out the door, right? Let me know. Fifth on the list is the walls. Yes, the walls are also a palette and one mistake I often see is leaving them plain and uninspired. Once again, I've talked about wallpaper and how transformative it can be to really add that element to inject character and drama into a foyer. Whether it's a bold geometric pattern or even a delicate floral design, it really adds that timeless textured finish and wallpaper can completely redefine your space. And no, it doesn't have to break the bank either. You don't need to go all out on wallpaper here because much like your flooring, we've talked about the linear footage that you actually need for these areas are so small to begin with that really makes it worth it in the long run. If you are going to use wallpaper though, I will always make the commitment to it. Don't just do it as a single accent wall because something like this is going to feel dingy and really look out of place. Commit to doing the entire foyer in the wallpaper to really create a cocooning effect that makes a bold impact that provides an immersive experience. If you're afraid of commitment but still want to have an interesting design feature, try using the wallpaper just on the ceiling. I guarantee anyone is going to notice it and comment on how good it looks. It instantly adds a level of luxury and can really make your space look bigger as well with that same visual connection of drawing your eyes upwards. Another aspect to consider is the comfort in your foyer and the overall design. Many of us forget that this is a space where we put on and take off our shoes that can quickly become an uncomfortable chore without proper seating. Introducing a small bench or an ottoman not only adds a touch of elegance to your foyer, but also addresses the practical need for comfort. It's a thoughtful gesture for you and your guests making shoe changing a breeze. Choosing a design that complements your foyer style while ensuring it's comfortable and functional. And for a bonus, there are ottomans out there that even double as storage. So if you are lacking space, this is an absolute game changer that you are not gonna be ever disappointed in. This is another really big thing that I notice in foyers is if the space actually has a place for you to take your shoes off. I don't know about you, but I'm 6'4", and having to go all the way down to take my shoes off while standing is a journey, to say the least. And everyone over the age of 25 is not going to have a comfortable experience with actually bending down to take them off when they arrive. It's the small details like this that we don't think of until we are actually in that situation, and they make a world of a difference. Foyers, if anything, often lack space, and I get it. The absence of dedicated grab-and-go storage can lead to unnecessary clutter. Incorporating clever storage solutions is going to make a world of a difference here. Trust me, from a wall-mounted shelf or a series of hook to really keep your essentials with arm's reach, or within arm's reach, a decorative tray or even a catch-all dish on your console table provides a designated spot for your keys or even your small items, collecting them in an area that you won't forget because I know far too many people, I'm not gonna say names, that have put their keys down in one place that's not defined and they end up being 
somewhere else. Or you end up spending 10 minutes looking for them and they ended up being in the fridge. That's actually happened one time, not me. I'm not gonna say names, but I know somebody that's happened. Anyways, consider a slim profile wall organizer with compartments for mail so it doesn't pile up here, or at least bring them into your house somewhere else. Because otherwise you're gonna end up never going through the mail and it just ends up piling up in your foyer. When dealing with a limited space, it's really essential to choose items that maximize functionality without overwhelming the area. A narrow console table with drawers offers a discreet home for gloves, hats, and even your scarves. Think vertically with a slim coat rack, or even a space-saving vertical shoe organizer. Even command strips on the inside of your closet or cabinet are the perfect spots to hide dog leashes as well so they aren't out in the open. This has been a game changer for me and my dog leashes. Choosing storage solutions and materials that also complement your foyer's overall design, like a sleek metal or a natural wood. Remember, finding these pieces that complement these spaces are really important so it doesn't cause a disconnect for the rest of your home. Remember, these functional elements, which are often overlooked, can also contribute to the visual appeal of your entryway. Now let's talk about the transformative power of greenery in your foyer. You may know that I am not a fan of faux plants, never have been and never will be. And yes, the one behind me, it's probably still there, isn't it? <sighs> Anyways, ignore that. We're just not gonna mention it. It's always there. We're gonna be replacing it eventually, but in the meantime, it's always there. Brody, do not shake your head. We're getting rid of it. Not anyway. <laughs> Incorporating a potted plant or even hanging planters, if you don't have much surface room, can really breathe life into your space. The natural vibrancy of greenery not only adds a touch of serenity, but also purifies the air. There are so many low maintenance plants like pothos that can really add a unique, subtle style to your space with those hanging vines that really makes it unique. I know you either love them or hate them, but fresh flowers are a timeless symbol of beauty in my opinion. So don't underestimate their impact in your foyer as well. Hi. You have bronchitis? Oh. Placing a vase of fresh flowers in your console table at their entrance can really captivate your guests and add in a fragrance that is really an understated elegance. Opting for seasonal blooms or long-lasting varieties to really keep your foyer perpetually charming is another key thing that I really want you to keep in mind. Oh, damn, I'm good. Look at me throwing out big words and shit. Foyer, fo foyer -y. Coming from someone who loves floral and greenery arrangements, changing the water every few days is going to keep them lasting longer. And if you really want to make an aromatic refresh of your space, I personally use fresh eucalyptus. It has this beautiful aromatic scent to it and they're beautifully voluptuous when it comes to really having that bold scent, but also for volume and how it looks in your space. Side note, if you do have pets though, keep this out of reach of them and always do your research because some of them can be toxic, including eucalyptus, depending on what pets you have, especially for cats. Small foyers can be a challenge and like I've said before, they typically lack vertical storage but this is where your most important factor in can really save the day. Considering wall-mounted shelves or even cubbies can really provide a space for shoes, bags, or even decorative items for display. A vertical coat rack or even hooks maximize wall space for coats and accessories, leaving your foyer clutter-free. Vertical storage isn't just about function. It also can be visually captivating in the way that it's designed and set up. Drawing your eyes up in a small space, like I said before, can really expand it, so get creative by choosing storage unit that double as artwork even as well. Floating shelves could also hold decorative items, creating an eye-catching display, and vertical plant stands can also introduce greenery and style simultaneously. 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 I'm just not gonna use that word. Fuck it. Why can't I speak? Vertical storage solutions are honestly an integral part of your foyer design scheme, and I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but even using a medicine cabinet in your foyer adds that additional storage for keys, perfume that you can even give yourself a spritz before you leave the house. Foyers typically don't have a large square footprint in your home, and there is always room to go up. Ikea has those Eket pieces that are super slim profile squares with even doors on them that can be mounted up higher to store away seats seasonal items. The last resort, if you don't go with wall detail, wallpaper, it's going to be paint and you need to choose the correct color. Start by understanding the color palette of all the adjacent rooms to really ensure a seamless flow. Your foyer color should be harmonizing with your home's existing colors to create a unified look so it doesn't give that much of a contrast and it doesn't look disconnected. Keep this in mind because 
In your foyer, you have sight lines for the rest of your home, and that's where you want that connection. If your foyer is naturally well lit, you can really experiment with darker hues. For smaller or less lit foyers, lighter shades can make your space feel more open, and this is usually the only time I follow this rule. Always consider how natural and artificial light really interacts with your chosen color. Paint a sizable section of your foyer with the chosen color and really observe how it looks and feels in different lighting conditions throughout the day. This is going to allow you to make a much more informed decision on what looks best in your space. Colors evoke emotions, so your foyer color should set the desired mood. Warm tones like beige or even soft yellows can create a cozy atmosphere, while cool shades like blues or grays can establish a serene and really sophisticated environment. Earthy tones like green and browns can create a welcoming and organic atmosphere if you want that contrasted look. They also tend to blend seamlessly with outdoor views, blurring the lines between the outdoor and indoor views. Remember, your foyer is the gateway to your home's personality. By avoiding these common mistakes and implementing my corresponding solutions that I've gone over, you'll create an entrance that is not only functional, but also breathtaking and in a good way. I know I've given you a lot of different options, so keep that in mind that not every single one has to be implemented into your foyer. Not every piece needs to demand your attention in the overall space, and less is always more, especially in smaller spaces. If you can select any of them, I'd say one or two of these to really stand out in your overall design and implement them into your space. That's all for today, so be sure to like this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on all my socials at Mr. Phoenix Gray for all my daily design advice. If you ever have an interior design question, I answer all of the most commonly asked questions on my free interior design newsletter through my website. And remember, if you're ever second guessing yourself, just ask, what would Design Daddy do? Very nice. <laughs> Hello.